Well, I'm a little bit excited. Look what I've got. This is the Instant Pot Gourmet Crisp and Air Fryer. I did not end up getting it off Amazon Prime because Amazon Prime did not have it on their shelves when I was looking on Tuesday and Wednesday. However, Costco to the rescue. We have started a Costco membership about a month ago and we'd spotted it in there. We re The main reason we started the Costco membership was fuel. It is cheaper than anywhere else and we've worked out the savings we'd make on fuel, cover the price of the membership for us. So this is why we are using it. So let's have a look and see what we've got. I have not opened this yet. So you are joining me as I ugh, tell you and see what everything is inside the box. So I mentioned in my gardening video, I was looking forward to potentially doing some dehydrating in here, but it has loads of other features as well. Oh, crikey, right, okay. First thing, this is a stand for the air fryer lid to go on. And you can also use it to store that. It stops it from putting heat on there. This is one of the inserts that goes inside the air fryer. We have, I'm assuming this is the sealing ring for the uh, pressure cooker lid. Okay, oh my goodness. I'm assuming it's this thick because it's in many languages, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be doing some serious reading on this. So, let's get to the next bit. Oh, the important bit, plug. I'm assuming that there is a British adaption to it somewhere in here. Yes, American, British, that's good. Okay, next layer. Oh, this. Right. Here we go. Here is the main pot. I will get that out and have a look at that in a moment. And then we have the air tire lid as well. So this is the main air fryer lid. Let me move the box out of the way. I don't think there's anything else in there. I'll double check. So this is the main air fryer lid I've heard about. So this is where you sit this on top of the uh, main pot and the heating element is all in there. And then this sits on top of here. So to protect your work surface, which is really good. Okay, main air fryer. No, nope. main pot. Okay, oh, we've even got goodies inside. So, you have got your little Instapot grabbies, which are so cute. So, these are for you to use so that you are able to grab your Instapot out of there without burning your fingers. So, that's quite cute. Then we have, there's like a trivet in here. So if you, for example, were cooking a chicken or something like that, you do have a trivet you can use. You can have it in that way to pull things out. And I believe it will also click into place that way as well. Then we have the air fryer container. So this is what we will use for air frying in there. Get everything out. Oh, so much stuff. And then you've got your massive bowl. This is great. This is a really, really good side size. I should say that fits in there. Then you put your air fryer container inside if you want to have your air fryer do two layers if you want to come and have a look so you put your air fryer inside you can put your second layer on top 
Um, it says you can also use this for dehydrating, but I'm looking into buying the full accessory for dehydrating. And then here is where this goes and it fits onto this little section on the side. And then that just drops on. Let's get it right in the right place. There we go. That fits really nice and easily. Now I've seen that there is a little drip tray at the back, which is used if there is any steam or anything like that. So it recommends leaving that on and you just clip that into place. So this is the Instapot air fryer and gourmet Chris, let me tell you what we've got on here. So we have got the pressure cooker, saute, slow cook, you can sterilise if you are a canning person. You can sous vide if you are in to doing your um, very um, posh cooking systems. I've seen chefs do this. I've had a try of doing sous vide myself. It is quite an interesting way of cooking. Um, you can air fry. You can roast. You can bake. You can grill. You can dehydrate. This is brilliant. Now, I did post on the youtube community and ask which feature um you would like me to have a go at first and once i've read the book i'm going to have a go at doing some chickpeas and i think i'm going to make myself some hummus so i've got some dried chickpeas in the cupboard so i'm going to have a bit of a look and see how long it's going to take for me to do that and then we will get on and have a try at doing that Rightio then, I have had a look online at how to do these chickpeas and the simple way to do them is there's two ways. One takes longer, but it's a shorter cooking time. Um, or you, which is you can soak your chickpeas for about eight hours in some cold water and then um, that will soften them up slightly and then you pressure can cook them for about 20 minutes. In this situation, I am going for just some straight up dried chickpeas, which... I've got a cup's worth here, so I'm going to put those in. And then I'm going to go with three cups of water. Okay. Some people put salt in now. I'm not going to. I do know with some beans that when you cook beans, you shouldn't put salt in with them because it can toughen them up. So I'm just going to omit the salt. I like to add my salt later, and then I know what I'm doing. And then I am just going to put my pressure cooker lid on. And the way we do that is we look for where it says, I don't know if you can read it, where it says open and close. And there is a little arrow that you line up. So my arrow is, where's my arrow? Do you know, they make this look so easy. Is that the right way around? Yes, it is. Arrow lined up. <laughs> right. We're having technical issues with this. I literally just tried it a minute ago and it works absolutely fine. Okay, hold on. Ah, there we go. I'm looking at the wrong arrow. I am such a numpty. Look here, there are two arrows. There is the arrow up here, but there's an arrow down there. And then there's an arrow over there. And I was too busy looking at this one which is the locked one, and that's the unlocked one. I'm an empty. Okay, lock. Then we make sure that the top is released where you do that, and then that's ready. And then we are going to go pressure cook on high, and magically it is on the 35 minutes that we want. So we will press start, and then you wait for it to get up to temperature starts pressure cooking and then it will do its 35 minutes of pressure cooking and we will come back and see how that's done right we have beeped i have hit the vent button we have vented in theory we should be okay to lift this sounds good Ooh, lots of leftover steam have a look in there those are our chickpeas that I'm going to drain. You can see quite a lot of the skins have come off. Oh, you're steaming up. Quite a lot of the skins have come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
just rinse these and get rid of those for the hummus because I don't want a lot of skins in there. But what we need to do, check, is how tender they are. So I'm literally going to take one out, put it on the work surface and see how it feels. That, that is great. That is really, really super uber tender. Excellent. That's going to be fantastic for our hummus. These are the chickpeas. I've given them a little bit of rinse. I've removed some of the skins of them. I've not been overzealous about it. If you want to sit there and remove all the skins, that's great. It will give you a much, much smoother hummus, but you do not have to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer them. Look, yes, if you know, you know. So you, if you saw my canning video and you saw I didn't have the special canning uh, funnel yes i have bought one i have bought a canning funnel and the special grippers for getting things out of the um pan so yay i'm on my way to learning more so this is this is actually quite handy for popping this into um our smoothie maker um that is what I'm using today. I find the smoothie maker works really good um, for doing things like hummus and stuff like that. So in there, I have got my chickpeas. I am going to add some garlic. This is all the garlic I've got left in my jar. I'm being very cheating using my garlic jar. Then in there, I am also going in with some lemon juice. I like quite a lemony um, hummus. So we're going in with some good squeezes. Now, I like a flavoured hummus. I like standard hummus, but I like flavoured hummus. And I have got some roasted onions. That These have been in my freezer, so I've defrosted these. These are going in. We are going to make a roasted onion hummus. Now, traditionally, hummus would include tahini. I've run out. So we're going to go sans tahini and see how it comes out. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. I'm going to go in with a good, good, good glug. This is probably about 80 mils, I'm going to say, of um, a nice extra virgin olive oil this is the one i've particularly used i always pick olive oil that's in a darker jar because it's a um it lasts longer apparently if it's in a darker container we're going to go in with a pinch of the malvern sea salt we are going to start that off see how it does in my smoothie maker and then see if we need to add anything else so here it goes oh helps if you plug it in technical difficulties today are great aren't they there we go we're plugged in <laughs> okay that started off really well but if you can see we've still got some at the top and we are making way headway at the bottom so what i'm going to add now is i don't want to add any extra oil so i'm going to add some really cold water this is cold water that i keep in a container in the fridge we're going to add i'm going to say 50 mils of really cold water and then we will go again and that'll help thin it down. Are you ready? Okay, we've started to get a nice whipped consistency. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mix because we've still got a little bit of chickpeas down at the bottom that can't get through because it's quite a thick mixture. So if you were using a food processor, you would be able to push this down. It would be almost in reverse. But because I am using the smooth maker, I am bringing it up to the top. 
uh, if you've seen yeah I mentioned previously that my food processor died I was very sad it was a really good one as well it used to be my mum's and then it stopped working so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this and then give that a bit of a poke down to the bottom hopefully that should loosen it up and we'll give that another blend Okie dokie. Let's give you a better look at that. You ready? Right, we've given that another blend. The main thing now is the most important thing, taste. I've just dropped my spoon on the floor. Let's go for another one. Okay, let's have a bit of a... That is quite nicely whipped and light. Let's give this a go. Mmm. Definitely try it with the onions in. The onions just absolutely make it absolutely delicious. The only thing I'm going to add is a pinch more salt. Just to enhance it. And a dash more water because I just want it very, 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 very slightly looser. But flavour wise, that is really, really good. Yes, I'm double dipping. It's only me and Chris who's going to eat it, so. Oh, yeah. Look at that consistency. Really nice. That doesn't need the tahini at all. That is delicious. So, on that note... I have my Instapot! I'm so excited. I am really looking forward to exploring what this Instapot can do and all the different facilities it's got, all the different settings it's got. Please let me know in the comments if you have an Instant Pot, which one do you have? What's your favourite feature? What do you love to cook in it? I remember we're vegetarian. However, tell me, if you like cooking a chicken in there, that's great to know because I can then pass that information on to other people. Um, you know, I'm vegetarian. That doesn't mean everybody else has to be vegetarian. That's their choice. That's my choice. Thank you for watching. Please do the liking and definitely do the subscribing, especially if you want to see more instant pot recipes. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.